Good morning, DGR. Here we go into the studio. Is it? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, it's the first marathon racing, half marathon racing shoe to arrive in 2023. Very exciting. Actually, I'll, I'll do my best to link to the, the carbon fiber plate marathon racing shoe playlist in the description. All right. All the carbon fiber plates I've tested ever are on that playlist. So if you want to go back into the archive, that's where they will be. That's where this shoe will end up. That's right. The Saucony Endorphin Elite. There it is in a nice, crisp, green, citrusy colorway. All right. Oh, my goodness. What a shoe. What a shoe. Where to begin? All right. Actually, here, here's where we're going to begin. All 10 categories, just to remind you, this is how we score our shoes. All right. And I tell you this at the beginning so that you can pull out the information that you're most interested in. You know, maybe it is the outsole. Maybe you need some extra grip on your marathons that are, I don't know, on wet surfaces wherever you live around the world. Or maybe it is the breathability because you know you're going to be running and racing in very hot conditions in 2023. So anyway, there's the categories, all right? So you, because guess what? Kudos, shout out to the designers, the engineers, the manufacturers, everybody that's putting their work into creating marathon racing shoes and enhancing our race day experiences, um, they're striving. And if, just think how far we've come in the last five years. It's just um, unbelievable, okay? So here we go, Saucony Endorphin Elite. Let's put it on the scale. I believe we're looking at seven ounces in my size, and boom, you know what shoe that is. All right, in my size, Endorphin Elite, 6.9, 6.97 ounces, Endorphin Pro 3 coming in at 6.8, 6.7 for the Endorphin Pro 3. So basically the same, but you know the drill. Nike Next Percent 2, just, I just, I want to give you an idea of kind of what we're working with, with the scoring and the weights. So still in my size at 6.2 ounces. All right. So, you know, a little over half an ounce lighter for the next percent too. All right. So upper, here we go. Um, nice work. Uh, Saucony. I like the tongue. It laid on top of the foot. Well, it is semi gusseted. Uh, breathability off the charts. I think it's I'm trying to just remember, but I believe it's the highest breathability out of any marathon carbon fiber plate shoe I've ever tested. Heel counter, awesome work. Nice pad there. I had absolutely no issue at all with rubbing or uh, blisters or anything like that in the back of the uh, uh, the back of the shoe there. So I like I like overall really. I think it's a, I think it is a step up from the endorphin. Pro 3, just so you know, a little smoother material as well in the back of the heel counter, just to make sure you don't have any friction happening through the 26.2 miles of racing. Uh, that is the last thing you want is a blister in a marathon or half marathon race. Okay, so I'm pleased. All right, there's my scores for the upper. Good work there, Saucony. On to that Power Run HG midsole material, that lattice structure that I've been just talking and raving about so much in the studio in the past, you know, I don't know, last 18 months, frankly. Here we go. Pro 3 coming in at about 35. Let me just 35, 36. That's getting 33. Let's go toe box. 26, okay, interesting under the toe box. Let's just confirm here on the medial side. Okay, about 31, all right? So just, just giving you a range here, okay? Interesting, so Saucony, I'm gonna say, hold on, see, I'm getting 37, 38 in the back here. Now listen, this midsole Endorphin Pro 3 is a little old at this point, 38 there, and let's just do one on the bottom, 34, okay? So I think that the Endorphin Elite I don't know, officially, we'll get some more information after the embargo is over, but I believe they firmed up the midsole just a smidge, which I think is smart. Now, if you like a little softer, Endorphin Pro 3 for your midsole ride. Uh, but for that midsole, it feels, just and just to the thumb test, it just feels a little more firm. I bet they're gonna confirm that once this embargo is over. When I'm filming this, the embargo is still up, so there's not as much information out there, but it feels a little more uh, firm just to the thumb test as well. Now, the plate changed, okay, from the Pro 3 to the Elite. So we got a, basically, under the toe box, you have, I'm not going to say it's like the rods from Adidas, but it's they, they, they have a cut in them, in the uh, midsole. How would I describe it? It is a slotted plate. There you go. So you got slots, basically slats happening underneath the toe box. So it's not just one complete plate. 
probably to help with a little bit of allowing your toes to be a little more nimble inside that toe off. So when you're towing off, through, which is so critical to use your full power, not just through your, uh, your landing, but also that toe off. So I, I like it. It felt good under step, okay, through the, uh, oh yeah, did I mention, okay, so did a 23 mile run at 640 a mile, did a 10 mile run at uh, 540 a mile, Oh, and then there was one other tempo day. Um, actually, no, yeah, well, I took it to the track. Oh my goodness, the track day, you guys remember that. And uh, oh, it was six miles at about 535 a mile, but you know what happened there on the track. Anyway, it's a great, it felt great in the testing, that plate, especially through the toe off. Now, um, I'll just say, I'm not afraid to go there. Thank you, Saucony, for sending. I'm not sure if it is ascending higher than the Nike Next% Percent 2 for me. I don't know yet. I need to do some more testing with respect to getting it into an actual race. All right, a half marathon probably in spring 2023. So stay tuned once I am able to uh, take it out for an actual race day experience. All right, outsole. We're looking at, though, yeah, there's the scores for the midsole. Outsole, we're looking at XT900 rubber. They did enhance the uh, decoupled groove, the groove there on the bottom. I like it, good work there, okay. Overall solid on the grip, and I was running in some very interesting conditions. It is winter time in Colorado, so uh, not ideal for uh, going you know, incredibly fast, but we did grip well with that XT. So if you live somewhere where it gets a lot of rain, I think it's gonna grip well uh, it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna grip well on the pavement under step, okay? It just, it feels tacky to the touch, okay? So I like that. Um, and not, yeah, a little bit of, on the medial side here, a little bit of, uh, breakdown happening, but not too, too bad. And there's my durability prediction, okay? That is to get the full, of course, the, the photos will stream in, you know they will, uh, once this shoe is released into the wild very, very soon. In fact, I believe it's late, uh, mid to late February that this shoe will be available to the public. And I, I'm linking to all of these shoes in the description as well. Um, I believe it is ready for pre-order. We'll put a title on the screen right now. I think you can pre-order it now if you wanna get in line, because I predict it's gonna sell out. I really do. At least the initial wave, and then they might have a second wave released, but I bet this shoe is going to sell out. Fit, comfort scores, there you go. I'm not crazy concerned about comfort for a race day shoe. You know, what I'm really worried about is, uh, am I gonna go fast? You know, am I, that ride and energy return, and the weight of the shoe as well, definitely for racing, everybody, all right? How will I use this shoe? Of course, racing. Um, I would race in this shoe, I would. Not all carbon fiber plates that show up. Am I willing to sacrifice a race to test a shoe? I would race 100% in this shoe, all right? Just saying, like, it's these two, all right? And, and this guy, all right? And we'll get to the price point here. And actually, let's do the price point right now. Still, now you can buy the next percent two on sale in certain places, uh, but still at that 250, 225, Endorphin Pro 3, 275. I'm gonna hold them accountable. I'm not afraid. All right, Saucony, there's your score for this for the price point. Um, that's getting up there. That's that's definitely getting up there. So five out of ten. That's uh, that's a little rough. I mean, if you need to save fifty dollars, I'd go Pro 3. I really would. Is there a, that much of a difference between the two? I don't know. I'm just gonna say it. Now listen, the, the, you know, everyone's pinching pennies right now. The economy's rough, so I don't know. Maybe the Pro 3 is gonna sell out in 2023. I love the Pro 3, but um, it is, yeah. So you just, and again, that's where I mentioned at the beginning all the categories. Maybe you are looking for a new and updated and very breathable upper. Again, I think the enhancement to the shoe in a big way is the upper, and then the fact that there's a little bit more uh, nimbleness under step through the toe off because of that updated plate. But is it worth fifty dollars? Again, that's where you just got it. That's where you just think. All right, you just look at look at your bank account and make a decision. All right, and again, they are all listed down below from Running Warehouse if you want to pick any of these carbon fiber plate shoes up. There you have it. Other shoes to buy. You know what they are. Just two of them, okay? And those shoe quick specs one more time. Shore C coming in at 37, XT900 rubber. There's the drop. Oh, I didn't even mention the drop. I love that drop. Eight millimeter. Love it. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I think a lot of carbon fiber plate shoes are landing in that eight millimeters versus six, definitely not four and versus 10 or 12, it's just too much. So eight is, 
it seems like it's turning into the sweet spot for a lot of different running shoe companies out there. And there you go, 7.2 out of 10. Ooh, you know, I mean, it's I'm just not afraid to include pricing, as you all know. And oh, it's tough. It's tough. It's like it's the it's the plate. It's the upper, and you just gotta ask yourself, you just gotta, I'm sorry I can't give you a more conclusive answer as to which one is gonna be best for you in 2023. Um, but I think I've given you enough information on price, on plate, on foam, on upper, that you can really dig down into uh, what's most important to you for your marathon or half marathon racing shoes in 2023. All right, we're just communicating information there. There's the comment of the day being pulled from the uh, Endorphin Pro 3 full review. Soak it in, all right, hit pause. And then um, question of the day, what marathon or half marathon are you already registered for in 2023? Which one of you, uh, you are rocking and rolling, you're ready to go. If you want to say the shoe you're going to race in, that's great. That helps everybody. But at the very least, are you registered? Which ones on the roads, road or half marathon? We will toss it to the Endorphin Pro 3 full review. Endorphin Pro 3 full review right there, right there. Oh my goodness, what a day. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. Good luck. Good luck. It's a good problem to have. It's, a, it's an incredible blessing. All these designers, engineers, everybody making these shoes. They're doing great, but um, it makes our life hard as uh, consumers out there in the running shoe marketplace. All right, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.